Hello, my name is Stephanie Wong. My art history presentation is on tuberculosis, a painting by the Vanguardia painter Fidelio Ponce. Ponce was born in 1895 and studied at the National Academy of San Alejandro in Cuba. Instead of traveling abroad to study in Europe as many of his modernist contemporaries did, Ponce isolated himself for five years in Cuba. After this isolation, his work became much more violent, melancholy, heavy, and monochrome. Throughout his life, Ponce battled with poverty, alcoholism, and illness. The painting Tuberculosis was made in 1934 when Ponce was sick with a case of his recurring tuberculosis. The media is oil paints on canvas. The piece is from the perspective of the sickly patient, the artist Ponce himself. Ponce battled with tuberculosis for many years and it eventually took his life in 1949. The painting is composed of five figures all directly looking towards us, the patient positioned on a deathbed in the very shoes of Ponce's terminal illness. There are three women and a small girl on the right side of the frame and one woman leaning towards the left of the frame. The figure on the left is a nurse, as evidenced by her headdress and stethoscope or other medical device around her neck. Starting from the middle, there is a tall woman, presumably the patient's wife, with her youngest daughter below her, tilting her head in curiosity. Next, there is another woman, perhaps an older daughter or other family member who is stacked in front, with her right hand resting on a human skull. This is a memento mori, a Latin phrase that translates to, remember, you must die. In a piece of art, a memento mori is a symbolic trope as a reminder of the inevitability of death. This is an extremely pertinent example, as we, in the shoes of Ponce, are viewing the scene as we are dying on our own deathbed. Next to the woman is a nun, as symbolized by the cross around her neck. It is common for religious leaders and nuns to visit hospitals, providing wisdom and solace to dying and sick patients. In my opinion, Ponce was probably visited by many different nuns during his hospital stays while battling with tuberculosis. The scene of pity and observation was one he must have been well acquainted with. From a formal approach, the lines, shapes, colors, and textures in this painting truly emphasize the heartless and defeating feeling of dying from a terminal illness and being observed as a medical case or even a lost cause. The lines are very vertical, elongated, curved, and even elegant, in a scary, creepy sense. The stretched nature of Ponce's figures is similar to El Greco's forms, a European artist Ponce was influenced by. To me, it feels as if the women are weighted at the bottom, but airy at the tops of their heads, about to be blown away into the depths of memory and obscurity once the patient closes their eyes. The head shapes of the figures are oblong ovals, akin to loose and flabby masks hiding true intentions instead of realistic and caring faces comforting a dying patient. In my opinion, the women seem to be nightmarish mud monsters, with their heads only held upright by tight white straight jackets. However, the young child is different. She tilts her head to the right at a different angle than the other figures. She is curious but also filled with a childlike confusion and isn't aware of what is unfolding. She is witnessing a tragedy without fully understanding it. Meanwhile, the nurse is separated from the whole group, looking down desensitized. The color palette of the painting is filled with cruel whites, sludgy browns and grays, cold blues, and sickly green undertones. Normally, the color white is associated with cleanliness and purity, but in tuberculosis, Ponce counters this typical assumption, utilizing pure whites to examine the impending darkness of death, the emotionless sterility of the hospital, and the young girl's loss of her childhood innocence. The texture of the painting is harsh and rough. There are many valleys, gorges, and peaks of paint applied liberally. This was because Ponce painted on the hospital floor with no easel. Additionally, what further contributes to this texture are the previous two versions of tuberculosis underneath the final visible product. Since Ponce was very poor, he would frequently paint over pieces to save pennies. Dr. Antonietti, Ponce's primary doctor, recalls how, to create this piece, Ponce used his fingers, the palms of his hands, and even the handles of brushes to achieve the texture. 
In conclusion, Quant expertly uses color, texture, line, and composition to viscerally connect viewers into his plagued shoes of desperation, terminal illness, hopelessness, and ultimate acceptance of death.